Hello guys, Julian here from the DIY Lithium Iron Phosphate channel. We're going to jump straight into it to wire up ourselves a 576 watt hour 4S3P headway pack. Alright, let's go. Each of these cells gives us 15 amp hours, so we're going to put them three in parallel for a total of 45 when we connect them in series. That's how we end up with the 576 watt hour pack when we're done. Please notice each parallel set is oriented in exactly the same way. Then we alternate for the next set in the series. Each additional cell in parallel is going to increase our battery capacity, while each cell in series is going to increase our voltage. I've already put the holder together, so I'm just going to install it onto the top of the cells now before connecting up the bus bars. Now one thing I like to do is make some reference points on the cell holder so I don't make a mistake inadvertently when I'm connecting up the bus bars. Here I'm adding some markings for the battery plus and battery minus of the pack. Again, this is just for a quick reference when I'm installing the bus bars. For the bus bars, I'm using a combination of bars and plates. We use the bus bars for the main uh, battery plus and battery minus connections, and we use the plates when alternating from one set to the other. The reason I'm using the plates is uh, to reduce the amount of resistance in the pack. Every additional connection point, for example, multiple layers of bus bars, adds resistance to the pack. So here I'm going to make the bus bar reference points on the cell holders. Like the battery plus and battery minus uh, reference points we made earlier, this just helps me to ensure I connect up the bus bars the right way. There's an awful lot of energy in these packs, guys, so we want to make sure we give ourselves as many reference points as possible to remain safe. So now we start installing the bus bars. I start with the battery plus side, and I don't do anything to protect from the cell next to it because there's nothing connected. There's no way to short this out. Once we're done with the plus side, we'll move over to the battery minus side, and it's the same thing with the cell set next to it. There's no connection between it, so it's almost impossible to short it out. Now before we start working on the cells next to the main plus and minus, we want to cover the main plus and minus with a vinyl tape to ensure we can't short out uh, the bus bars from the cells next to it. We'll do that for both the positive side of the pack and the negative side of the pack bus bars. Now, I used to use Kapton tape for this, but I found there's no reason to actually waste the Kapton tape um, because we're just going to remove this when we're done. So a good quality thick vinyl tape is enough. Now we're going to connect the center point of the pack. You see where I've drawn the reference points, so we're just going to install the bus bars across them. We'll use two bus bars on each set to make the parallel connection and three bus bars between the cells to make the series connection. Make sure not to hulk those connections down, guys. You can find the torque spec in the documentation that came with your cells. Now we're going to flip the pack over and start working on the most dangerous part of the build. You want to make sure your workspace is clean and free from any metal parts that might uh, inadvertently short out the cells on the back side. I do understand I'm kind of a fanatic when it comes to checking and double checking these cells when we're putting them together, but it's good practice, guys. So again, we start by applying the vinyl tape to protect the cells uh, opposite from where we're working. So we'll go ahead and remove the screws, double check, and then start installing the plates. 
Since it's so difficult to find a plate for three cells in parallel, I'm just overlapping with two plates. If you were able to find the plates for a three parallel pack, please let me know where you found it. All right, the right side is finished, so we're going to remove our vinyl tape, put it on the other side, and then we can start the left side of the pack. Just a side note while I'm putting this pack together. When this pack is done, we'll be able to get a maximum current draw of 450 amps out of it. I don't think many people have an idea of how much energy that actually is. It'll certainly start your car, but it'll probably start your tank or your airplane or whatever you'd like to start with it as well. All right, so let's go ahead and grab the multimeter and just check that we have the correct voltage coming out of this pack. I forgot to do it on camera, but uh, you can check the individual parallel sets for the voltage and you can check also the entire pack. Now, before I put this pack together, I used my Turnigy charger to charge up each of the individual cells to 3.33 volts. So I'm expecting to get 13.3, uh, 13.35 volts out of the pack. And there we have it, 13.3 volts is absolutely perfect. In the next video, I'll show you how to wire up the BMS for this pack and where to actually get it. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, leave me a thumbs up and perhaps drop a comment. You can also share this video with someone or somewhere where people might enjoy it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Julian out.